Pat, thanks for your time today. Uh, we know Journey has been through much in his life. Uh, can you express how you are feeling about him today with in light of the news last night? Yeah, um, I'm not going to get really much into the whole Journey thing. That's for him and Coach Fine to discuss. Um, but obviously, I'm just going to support him in any way that he needs it. And um, he's my brother for life, and I'm just going to support him um, whatever way he needs it. Max Arullo. Hey, uh, Pat, how's it going? How are you? Hey, it's going good. So, you know, just wanted to say, you know, over the past couple of months, obviously your, your parents and many of the other Penn State, uh, you know, football parents have played a big role in kind of helping you guys get to where you are now. What can you tell us about the, the role they've played and, you know, how, you know, just what it's been like for them to be so active in uh, kind of helping you guys through these past couple of months? Yeah, uh, so I, like, obviously my parents have been a big uh, advocate for us to play and, I mean, I think um, they did a great job. I think my mother and my dad, um, they did a great job kind of voicing their opinions and, and using their voice as parents for myself and obviously for all the players on the team and other Big Ten schools. I think it was really cool that all the Big Ten schools came together and kind of created this whole parents association, like United thing, and, and kind of stood up for us and, and expressed their um, doubt on the season that was supposed to happen but then got canceled, um, that, that should have happened. Um, and I, I'm just, you know, appreciative of my mom and my dad for or for sticking in and, and doing what's right. Um, and obviously, you know, it stinks because obviously um, from Mass, you're from Mass too, but the travel ban and stuff like that to other states, like they're not gonna be able to come to any games, which is which is very sad and, and heartbreaking for myself because they haven't missed a game at Penn State um, for my, my whole time here. So I'm just really appreciative of them knowing that and still continue to fight, not being selfish and continue to fight for these other parents to come and see their kids play and. Uh, I'm just really happy that, you know, that I can call them my mom and dad. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really appreciative of them. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. Tobias Wilborn. Hey, Pat, man. Um, you mentioned earlier about your parents, and then you said you didn't want to get into anything. But, like, how do you deal with all the emotions that a football season and a pandemic bring, but also still prepare to play football? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, obviously, like you said, there's a lot of emotions coming with the season, you know, um, with, you know, being canceled and, you know, just getting put back on and all this kind of wave of uh, this emotional roller coaster that we've been put through. It's definitely tough. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's football. And I was talking to Coach Bowen about last night and when we were game planning Indiana a little bit, just, you know, just talking about all the different aspects of what, how what's making this year crazy and everything. And just at the end of the day, you know, it's, there's a football field and there's going to be 11 versus 11 and there's going to be a football and we're going to count points to see who wins. And at the end of the day, we have to go out there and, and control what we can control. And so when I've kind of taken the approach this year, when I'm in the building or I'm doing football, I put my phone away. I kind of block out all the rest of the noise and just focus on what I can do to become better and what I can do to help this team uh, be successful moving forward. So I just kind of think it's kind of a, a mentality where you just kind of have to block out the noise and just focus on what you can control and focus on what's in front of you. Tyler Donahue. Hey, good morning, Pat. Happy game week. I know this is one you've been waiting on. Yeah, no doubt. I can't wait. Um, what gives you confidence about where this offense is going to go under Kirk Shiraka, uh, specifically specifically in the passing game? Uh, the wide receivers getting more involved. Sean Clifford taking a step forward. Normally, we would have seen you guys, you know, throwing balls on the practice field a lot by now. It's been since Dallas in December. So we have really no clue at this point how things are shaping up. What's the what's what's the most behind the scenes you can give us without giving too much away? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the offense is going to be exciting. It's going to be fun to debut um, this Saturday. And, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of similarities from last year. But obviously, there's going to be some wrinkles and just kind of bringing Coach Soraka's background and, and seeing what he can do and what he puts through the off to the offense. I mean, it's awesome. He puts his playmakers in space. I think that's kind of what you can see kind of difference is, you know, like, Last year is kind of it was just we would call plays to call plays and uh, to a coverage and hopefully you know, you know it sticks and all that kind of stuff. But I think this year it's more of you know let's get our guys the ball who makes plays and and let's see what they can do and all that. So I think that there's been some really good young receivers and and old receivers, especially CSB and Jahan um, and Parker Washington and Keandre who've really done some really good things in camp and um, when they got the ball and got the opportunity they made some plays. So I think. Um, they're going to have a really big year. And I think that it, I'm just excited to get this offense rolling and, and see what we can do. Audrey Snyder. 
Hey, good morning, Pat. Uh, what's Coach Sharaka's demeanor, his temperament like on the practice field? Because talking to some of his old quarterbacks, one of them described him as kind of like Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, so he's 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 actually he's he's funny. I don't know how to really describe him. Like he's sometimes like he'll be taught like when he gives compliments, like he'll like yell at you. You know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> we'll be like just doing a really good rep or have a good play or score a touchdown or something, and then he'll start yelling. And we're all, at the first we're all confused. Like we just scored. Like what's going on? Why are you yelling at us? But like he, he intends that to be like fiery, like good job like he's pumped that kind of thing so at first like, it catches you off guard and it still catches me off guard sometimes like if I make a play in practice and he starts yelling at me I look at Tebow I'm like did, did he just yell at me like but he's but it, it's weird um his approach kind of just kind of so fiery and yelly but you know yeah, I'm excited and he's, he's an awesome coach and I just can't wait to see like what he does for game plans and what he does for this Saturday and during games and all that and all the in-game adjustments so I'm excited to, to work with him um this season. Joe Giuliano. Uh, good morning, Pat. Before I ask my question, could you just clarify? You said your parents cannot go to the road games or any games. They can't go to any games because of a, a ban on Massachusetts uh, that you can't go to. I, I, it's like selective states, I think. Um, so they can't attend any games this year. Okay, thank you. Um, how are you dealing with uh, the uncertainty of, of the fact that, you know, COVID is still out there and you're going to be starting to play games now? And, and how much confidence that you do you have that you know Penn State can get through this uh, about as unscathed as possible? Yeah, uh, I think this should go back to you know we talked about it a lot in the team meeting. Obviously, COVID's out there, and you know we've taken we fought for the season to happen, and so we kind of have to back up our words and stuff like that. So I mean, we have to it goes back to our core values and especially uh, sacrifice. Um, you know uh, what we talk about in the team meeting. We mu well, we have to must be willing to sacrifice everything to play this season. So I mean that's when your parents come to games, maybe you're not going to be able to go out and, and go to uh, dinner with them after the game or, you know, see them at a hotel the night before or go out and see your friends outside of football. Like we're going to have to make these sacrifices to make this season happen. And I think so far the team's done a great job and um, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, the season's happening and the team um, is taking great pride in, you know, not going out and not doing things that we normally can do um, during the season. But, stuff that we can't do this year. The team has done a great job doing that. So, I mean, I think if we continue to follow the protocols and not get lazy and continue to stay on top of things, that we're going to be in a great place. Mark Brennan. Pat, what is it like for this week to finally be here after everything that you guys and you personally have gone through in the off season? Uh, it, it's just such a relief. I mean, I, me and Cliff, uh, uh, we went in today to stretch and stuff like that this morning. Um, and we were just walking the building with a smile on our face. We started yelling and all that kind of stuff. We were in the building, like game week and all that. So um, it, it's it's awesome just to kind of be able to um, prepare for something other than practice and and going out there and, and compete on national television and and show what we can do, showcase what we can do. And um, you know, I've been waiting for this since you know December 29th after the Golden Bowl, and uh, I'm excited to get going. I'm excited to you know, showcase not only my talents but the whole team's uh, hard work and talents on national television. Travis Johnson. Hey, Pat, just curious, um, in your experience, in your opinion, what are some of the qualities that an offense needs to, uh, you know, be a big play offense? And have you guys had enough time to, to maybe glimpse any of those? Yeah. Um, so in my opinion, I think uh, what we kind of talk about is um, for our offense is, you know, the ball, the program, you can't turn the ball over every single time you have to, you know, hold on to the ball. You can't create, um, turnovers and all that because that will, that will get, come back and bite you in the foot. Um, we have to execute. We go out there and execute our assignments. We don't have to do anything out of our framework of the offense or anything out of what Coach Shark is asking us to do. We have to just do your job and mentality. At the end of the day, are you going to get the job done or not? Those are the three things we kind of go by. And I think, you know, th throughout this camp, it was rough at first kind of embracing those three mentalities. And, you know, we started embracing them and, and we saw some good things happen. Uh, I, I'm excited to see um, – what the offense is going to do Saturday. And, and we've really embraced those three things. Um, so I'm excited to you know, go out there and, and showcase that. And Jones. Pat, I'm curious, what's the difference between week one being against a big 10 team versus week one being maybe more traditional early season opponent. And how do you kind of get ready for the ramped up intensity right off the bat? Um, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, like you said, like I've never really been a part of um, playing like a, I guess a big time team the first 
um, the first week. Um, but, you know, I, we're going to have to come out and get ready to play. I mean, Indiana is a really good team. Um, they're they're really fast on defense. And I've, I've heard from what I've heard from the defensive players, they're really good on offense. So um, we're going to have to go out and attack. And we can't really have the go out there and see what and see what they do. We have to go out and punch them in the mouth first. And we have to go out and, you know, not really um, and take pride. And, you know, this is a big time team and a big time game um, as our first game. So we can't come out and, and relax. We got to go out and and throw that first punch and continue to continue to fight. Pat Principe. Hi there, Pat. How you doing? Good. Hey, you mentioned um, earlier about, you know, it's just a football game, 11 on 11, but you guys haven't played a real tackle football game since the Cotton Bowl. What, what impact could that have on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I mean, it could have an impact. I don't really expect to have an impact. I think the coaches have done a great job preparing us for this week one game. Um, I think we've done some good live um, tackling in, in, in camp. I think we've done a great job kind of uh, working on tackling and working on breaking tackles and all that such and, and hitting and, and blocking stuff with not with kind of taking care of our bodies. So, I mean, I don't see it really playing a factor um, in the first game, but, I mean, we'll, we'll see when we go out there. But um, I think that we're all in a good spot. I think uh, I don't really – hopefully it doesn't impact us at all. Parth Abadeya. What's up, Pat? Hope you're doing well. Um, for Jonathan Sutherland to wear the first, you know, number zero for Penn State, you know, James Franklin said that, you know, he's what this program's all about and, and the way he carries himself. Uh, what, what does that mean for him to get that number first? Yeah, it means a lot. Uh, Jay Stiles is, is a, a kind of guy that, I mean, I think the whole team looks up to. I think that he does everything the right way. He comes in every single day and, and just punches the clock. Um, he has a um, great routine that he does and, you know, he doesn't, fend, he doesn't go off from that routine and, I think he just does a great job just kind of showing up and, and doing what he can do and what he can control. And I think that, you know, that's a huge honor for him to be the first player ever to wear number zero in Penn State history. And I think that, you know, he fits all that criteria that was described to be able to wear number zero and more. Um, I think that he's an awesome guy. And, and that he's the reason why he's a two-time captain for us. Everyone looks up to him and everyone respects him. So um, I think that he it's a great honor for him and um, I'm happy for him. Rich Scarcella. Indiana has given you guys two tough games the last two years. Why do you think that is? What, what is it about them? And secondly, can you, you mentioned their defense, but what do you see on film from their defense? Yeah, I, I mean, Indiana's a great team. I mean, they're they're in the Big Ten for a reason. And I think that, you know, they're on the um, come up with, you know, their head coach is a great head coach and their D.C. and their and their and the talent they've been able to recruit. I think that they've done a great job and um, kind of building talent on that team and then on that roster. I think, you know, they play really hard on um, their defense is, you know, it's, it's really good defense in four, three on um, they play us with a nickel guy. Um, you know, I think they're, they're fast. They're, they have good technique and, you know, they play catch technique and they have some good coverages in the back end and, you know, their, their D line is great motor people. Um, so I think they're going to come out and, I mean, they're going to play hard. There's no question about that. Um, but we just got to execute and go back to our assignments and, and go back to our technique and, and hopefully go out there and just do what we can do and do what we can control and, you know, just go against a really good Big Ten defense. Tyler Donahue. Pat, I know you don't want to talk about Journey, but how about the other guys in that running back room? Uh, a lot of people are going to look nationally and see Penn State's not going to have Journey Brown. How are they possibly going to run the ball effectively? I think we all know better on the local beat. There's a lot of talent and depth at running back. What are you seeing on the practice field that encourages you about the ability to, to survive this challenge and maybe flourish and specifically those two freshmen that we haven't seen yet, Kevon Lee and Keziah Holmes. Are you getting excited about those guys as well? Yeah. Um, so I'm obviously, you know, you guys know about Noah and, and Noah's going to do what Noah does. He's going to get the ball and, and break tackles and, and run through guys and, and make yards after contact. And I think that Noah has been consistent and even he's gotten faster. He's gotten bigger. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's worked his, his, his tail off the whole off season and he's coming. He looked really well. He looked really good. So, I'm excited for Noah to get, you know, his opportunity to go out there and, and shine. And I think the – and Devin, I mean, don't sleep on Devin. He's done a really good job too. He's, he's quick and explosive. And, you know, he's done a really good job in this offense. I think it suits him really well. He's done a great job at receiving out of the backfield. And same with Kazai and Kevon. I think that they've done a really good job kind of embracing their role and kind of stepping up to the opportunity. Um, I think that Coach Siders demanded a lot from them, and I think they've responded well. Um, obviously, you saw the clip of Kazai in, in the lines then, and that kind of just – well, I mean, that was an unreal play by him, and I think he's done that consistently throughout camp, and 
And same with Kevon. I think Kevon's done a great job. And I think that whole coach side done a really good job recruiting that room. So I think, you know, obviously it's going to stink uh, not having Jerry. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, that the running backs are going to do a great job. Audrey Snyder. Staying in that room, Pat, um, what do you think Journey's role can be with this team? Because, you know, we always hear so much he's such a big personality. Guys love him. He's such a leader. Um, what's he been like at practice? Because it is a young running back room, of course, without him. Yeah, um, Journey Journey's a, g- a great guy, and he, he's a leader on this team. Um, you know, everyone looks up to him, even including myself. Um, everything he's been through, um, everything that he's stood for, and everything that he's worked so hard for throughout his time here, um, you know, I, I look up to him as an individual. And, um, you know, he's done a great job just kind of being there, um, being, uh, you know, someone to lean on, um, um, and then just being there for a mentor for the run, the young running backs. That's still a young running, a uh, young room. You know, I think Noah is a, he's obviously a sophomore and same with Devin, but you know, we've got two freshmen coming in. And, um, you know, I think that he's done a great job just kind of being their big brother. And, um, you know, just helping them out and seeing things that maybe they don't see, but he sees and he's just done a great job. And, you know, I think everyone in the whole program looks up to him. And I think everyone's just, you know, happy for um, the other running backs to see what they can do. You buy us well, Barn? Um, You kind of answered what I was going to ask, but I, I guess I'll frame it this way. Not the player, but just the man. What will you miss about the, him as a person, him as a guy being on the field with you and just the, the experiences that you guys have had together? Yeah, um, you know, Journey, Journey's still going to be there. Journey's, Journey's always in the building, and, and I always hang out with Journey. And, you know, I, I hang out with him all the time, and that, that's my brother. And, you know, I mean, I'm I, like I said, like I look up to him, and, and Journey's just a great – great man and, and off the field I mean he's just a great guy I mean everyone in the whole um, team looks up to him like I said and including myself and you know everyone I mean if I had you know the mentality that journey had I would be 10 times better as a man I am I think that journey is you know a great guy um, I think that I can't speak enough good things about him and I think that you know he's going to be a, a great successful person moving forward. Okay we have time for one more for Pat so we'll go with uh, Tyler Donahue. Pat, if I could ask you to shift your focus to the defensive side of the football, Brandon Smith's a guy getting a lot of attention. Seems to be the kind of versatile defender that may be on tight ends and on game day. What are you seeing from the offensive side of things that, that he presents uh, that's going to give offenses issues? Yeah, he's a freak. Um, I mean, obviously, physically, physically, he's you know, um, he's a great guy. Um, I mean, he's a great guy on the field. I mean, he's he's athletic. He's a freak. Um, he's fast. He's he's strong. I mean, trying to block him on outside zones not the best. The, my most favorite thing to do during camp. I mean, he's he sets the edge really well and great guy in coverage. So I mean, I'm excited to see him what he can do throughout the season, and I'm excited to him get his chance. Um, I think he stepped up to that role of, with Michael leaving, um, but I think he's going to do a really good job and he's ready for it.